Hey guys, welcome back to HW Sports 90. So guys, we are going to talk about what happened yesterday as far as the Premier League is concerned. Uh, there were a host of games that were played yesterday and um, you know, we are going to talk about the results of those games, included, in, including a disappointment for Manchester United, you know, um, Arsenal finally got their win against Aston Villa, Spurs with their first three points of the season. Also, Manchester City are continuing with their fine form with a 4-1 win against Ipswich Town. Uh, let's start with Manchester United. You know, they they had a good opener against Fulham where they played uh, interesting football. I think uh, they, were, they, they, uh, they were creating chances and they, they were they had shots on target and you could see that United are moving on the right direction. Uh, they won one nil uh, through uh, Joshua Ziak, the goal. And uh, coming in, in face Brighton yesterday, I was hoping for a different or, um, you know, a much more improved United performance. But uh, I guess I was wrong by my prediction when I say United going to win because um, looking at the first 11 that uh, Ten Hag have started with, uh, that is where I doubted if United could get the three points against Brighton because uh, playing without a proper striker against a team like Brighton, uh, that was the first mistake Eric Ten Hag did against Brighton, you know, because Brighton, if you could watch that game in the first half, a uh, Brighton defenders at uh, the, the, the back four, the four, number four and five, they were having free time. They were pressing United's midfield, you know, with Bruno Fernandes uh, pushing down the midfield, Rashford was some some sometimes seen, you know, uh, moving uh, as a striker. But Rashford, for me, I think uh, he's, he's not having his best season yet. So um, it, it, this was giving Brighton a chance, you know, uh, to press United and uh, to cause more, you know, threats with those long balls. And uh, we, we saw that happening because uh, Mount was trying to press, and when he press, he leaves, uh, you know, uh, holes in the midfield where Brighton used those chance. They used those. Uh, quite well, and uh, I think uh, uh, playing without a striker, you know, uh, against Fulham, they were fortunate to win. Yeah, uh, they were fortunate to win one nil because uh, Fulham, you know, they were not, not creating a lot of chances. They were, I think, they were afraid of United's new attack. But uh, for Brighton, they uh, they were confident. You know, we can get the job done against Manchester United. Ten Hag has faced uh, Brighton, I think, five times. And he has lost four out of those five. Uh, so, so this tells you that Brighton is always a problem for Eric Ten Hag. And, uh, you know, uh, I was thinking maybe he could make two or three changes. Yes, because I, I think um, Harry Maguire had a decent performance against uh, uh, Fulham. But uh, Brighton, you know, uh, they have first players like Mitoma, uh, Simon Adingra, the new signing, uh, Jakub Minte. And also they have a very experienced striker in uh, Daniel Beck. So I think maybe um, for this reason, he might start uh, Lissandro Martinez with Mathis Delict and uh, start uh, Joshua Ziakze as a striker and maybe, you know, uh, give Ganacho a start. Because um, for me, against Fulham, I wasn't convinced by Rashford. I wasn't convinced by the way United played without a proper number nine. So um, I was shocked to see Ten Hag. Uh, naming uh, the same same lineup he he, he named against uh, Fulham, uh, I thought maybe that worked out. But in real sense, Fulham uh, against Fulham, it didn't work out until uh, Joshua Zaksi came in and uh, you know scored the goal. So that is the first mistake uh, Ten Hag did against uh, Brighton. Brighton scored the first goal in the first half through Daniel Beck, who was now scored five goals against his former side and he scored a century of goals uh, yesterday united uh thought they were back but the goal was ruled out offside in the second half amadiallo scored to make it 1-1 one, one. and united thought they have uh, had a comeback when uh you know uh, ganacho scored but it was ruled out offside because a uh, joshua Ziakze, who was in an offside position you know the ball touched him before uh before it uh, it, it went over the line. So that is the rule, guys. That was a clear offside. If the ball uh, touched at Ziakze, when Ziakze is already inside the net, uh, that would have counted as a goal. But the moment the ball touched Joshua Ziakze and he was in an offside position, the goal 
will definitely rule out and that is what happened yesterday the goal was ruled out and uh, i know uh jiganacho might be fuming you know Zaxe. i don't blame Zaxe because he's a striker and that's what strikers are all, are all about they're, they're always hungry you not know, to have the ball in the back of the net and uh, he was trying he didn't know he was offside me because brighton were playing high line yesterday and we could see that united were offside in several locations also their goal was checked but it was miles it was millimeters away from being chalked off and um, i think brighton's uh decision to to play a high line uh somehow uh got them the, the three points and uh first defeat for manchester united under uh the new ineos regime uh what what uh, what was happening last season uh for united conceding goals late in the game uh happened again yesterday when they conceded in the last minute of the game the 90 plus 6 minute they conceded a goal when joao pedro scored to make it 2-1 for brighton and a perfect start uh for their manager who is making his debut uh for brighton this season um united they had four guys four players that is, I think it was Masroi, Matis Delict, uh, Alessandro Martinez, Diego, Diego Dalo. The four center backs, the four, the back four of Manchester United, they were defending a cross, I think by someone, some, uh, Adingra. Adingra was uh, the ball. And uh, these four players, they were trying to block this cross. I don't know where they were, t- I, don't, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, why they were trying to block this cross and uh maybe they knew there was somebody at the back i don't know if they knew there was joe pedro at the back i don't know uh, even um onana he knew joe pedro was unmarked why why can't you shout tell uh tell um Santa martinez tell uh, Matis delict tell Diego Dalo, guys there's somebody here unmarked stop concentrating on that, that one guy and come mark this guy here I think miscommunication. United uh, considered two easy goals yesterday. Ten Hag said it. He's been saying that the last last season it was all about excuses, excuses. You know, uh, we 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 were good, but the, we are we considered soft soft goals. As a manager, you know your problem. Why can't you work it out? Ten Hag, I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, I think uh, in the next two to three weeks he could find himself in a hot hot situation because Manchester United fans are not forgiving. Uh, I think uh, they gave him a chance last season, but this season I think they'll be um, asking for him to be sacked because uh, uh, you can't tell me the same same excuses, same same problems. You have new 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 players now. You have Lissandro Martinez, Matis Delict. Do something. You have Mazerui, Jackson. You are putting a uh, Jackson bench and starting Bruno Fernandes as strike and then you are hooking off Bruno Fernandes when you need to win. I think uh, Ten Hag needs to do more. If not, I think he's going to be the first manager to be sacked this season. Do you think pro- problems for Manchester United this season? Is it players, the manager, or management? Let me know your views in the comment section below. Arsenal continued their perfect uh, start to the season after their two nil victory against Aston Villa away at the Villa Park, and uh, it's now six points, four goals, and a clean sheet for the Gunners as they embark on another season to win the Premier League title for the first time in 20 years. And uh, they did it in the second half after I think um, I don't know some heroics from uh, David Raya to deny ever uh, to deny Aston Villa. Uh, goals there. I think uh, for me, David Dreyer was my man, man of the match. Uh, he was great. You know, he did well. I, I understand now. I understood why um, Mikel Arteta wanted him to replace Aaron Ramsdale. I know Ramsdale is not a bad shot stopper, but I think uh, David Dreyer has been performing since his arrival uh, to the Emirates Stadium from Brentford, and he did it yesterday against Aston Villa. The win was you know Arsenal won because of. Of a David Dreyer, and uh, this is where I think um, Arsenal is a good team because um, the goalkeeper was doing his work, trying not to concede, and also you can see Bukayo Saka did his, his his part as well as he set up two goals for Arsenal yesterday. Lisandro 
Leandro Trossard scored the first goal after two minutes being subbed in. Trossard, I think, is the best uh, substitute player for Arsenal. I mean, uh, I know because um, many goals he scored for Arsenal is when he came uh, from the he came come on from the bench, and uh, you know he always makes that difference. And we saw that yesterday. He came in two minutes later. He scored the goal to make it one 0 for the Gunners. Then Thomas Party, whom we thought might might leave us now this season, uh, scored the second goal again, assisted by the star boy that is the Bukayo Saka. Make it 2 0 for the Arsenal. Six points, four goals scored, clean sheet. What a life, what a start uh, for the Gunners as they, you know, try to uh, win it from, uh, win it this time round. Um, overall, I think I was not impressed by the way Arsenal played yesterday. Uh, to be honest with you, they were lucky uh, to get the job done. I think Aston Villa were just wasteful. They could have taken those chances they were wasting and that, that could have punished, punished Arsenal. So for me, uh, I wasn't impressed by the way Arsenal played, but, but uh, I, was, um, uh, I was happy by, by the way they reacted uh, from that uh, awful performance, scoring two goals and uh, no, are not conceding thanks to their, their defense and also David Raya as their goalkeeper. The reigning champions, Manchester City, also uh, had a perfect start yesterday. Uh, the, uh, they continued with the perfect start to the Premier League as they back to win it five times in a row after winning 4-1 against Ipswich Town, the newly promoted side. Um, Ipswich started on a high note. Uh, they scored the first goal in the seventh minute. Manchester City deployed five minutes earlier through Ailing brought Haaland, who scored a penalty two minutes later. Kevin De Bruyne scored to make it to one. Two minutes later, Erling Haaland scored his brace and the third for Manchester City to make it 3-1 for the citizens. That was remarkable. I really enjoyed that. It was nice uh, because uh, that, that was the perfect response you could want as a manager. And I think uh, Guardiola might must be proud of his team because the way they responded from being 1-0 down in the seventh minute to being 3-1, uh, five or that 10 minutes uh, later. Perfect. And that is how champions play. Watching Manchester City, watching Arsenal, and then you go back and watch Manchester United, uh, you know, uh, makes you wonder if uh, United are really serious. And uh, you might think, you might say United are miles, miles below City and Arsenal. 4-1, it's kind of goal scored by Erling Haaland. Hat-trick First hat trick uh, for the 2023, 24, 24, 25 season uh, to make it four goals in two matches uh, so far for Erling Haaland. I think uh, there's no one who can uh, you know challenge him for the golden boot this season. Scoring four goals in two matches, that's remarkable. And um, I think it's, it's not over yet. It's, it's just getting started. Scoring a first hat trick in the second game, second game of the of the season, remarkable. So um, for Manchester City, they also resigned uh, Ike Gundogan from Barcelona on a free transfer. I think it's going to be a good, good addition. That's a very good move from Guardiola to uh, bring in back uh, Ike Gundogan uh, from Barcelona. I think Barcelona are trying to you know to sell some players in order to be able to register Dan Olmo, uh, whom they signed from Albi Arabi Leipzig. So I think uh, it's understandable as well. Um, Manchester City, I think there's, there's only one team that could can stop a Manchester City from winning it five times in a row. And that is Arsenal. So uh, it, it all depends on Arsenal. If Arsenal, you know, um, uh, behave, if they behave, because in the past two seasons, they have not behaved as far as the last 10 matches are concerned. If they behave this, this, if they behave this time around, I think they could win it. But to win it against Manchester City, it needs a lot of hard work. And that is what Mikel Ateta needs to do. Ange Ball, or is, is it Ange Ball, was in full show as Tottenham won it against Everton. They won 4 nil. No, I, I missed the match, but uh, I watched the highlights, the excellent highlights, and uh, I was in, impressed by the response 
after a one one disappointed draw but disappointing draw against Leicester last weekend uh, they responded perfectly with a 4 nil win against Everton it's not that it's it's not that just the um winning 4-1 but the way they won it is what uh impressed me a lot you know Arsenal won 2 nil yes but the way they won it i wasn't impressed but uh, at, the, at the end of the at the end of the day the points matters but uh for Spurs the way they won it is just perfect as a manager you can say no what guys have 2 hours break you know you you are proud as a manager because uh, what you've been practic- doing uh, all over the week has been implemented in the game and you you are really happy and i was happy for bisuma who scored the first goal after being suspended for you know uh, for uh the reasons you know uh he came in the first 11 because he's a good, very good player uh the manager trust him he started he scored the first goal a very beautiful goal he scored there uh, to make it one nil for the uh for spurs an on go- um a mistake by um by Pickford, you know, a goal by Kuti Romero, uh, two goals by Son was enough to sink Everton. Everton lo- conceding seven goals in two matches. What? They need to do a lot. They need to do more if they are to remain the defender this season. Uh, they've been awful, Everton. Their, pa- their, last, their past two games. I know they've faced uh, Brighton. Yes, they've faced Trenton Hospers. Uh, you could say maybe those are bigger team but i think uh uh performance always matters they perform they they perform poorly in those two matches and uh if they are to remain at uh, the premier league this season um i think they need to do a lot uh at, in the training ground they need to put more effort in that also um back to back losses for the newly promoted sides that is uh southampton they lost they've, they've lost one nil again to Nottingham Forest. Fulham uh, with their first win of the season after one nil defeat to United, they won two one against Leicester, the newly promoted side as well. Again, Palace lost two nil to West Ham, who got their first win uh, of the season. So, guys, that that it uh, that's um, what happened in the Premier League uh, on Saturday. Brighton won two one against Manchester United. Uh, City won it 4 1 against East Fist Town. Arsenal 2 0 win against Villa. Tottenham Hotspurs 4 0 win against Everton. Southampton 1 0 down against Forest. Fulham 2 1 against Leicester. Palace losing at home 2 0 to West Ham United. At the moment, uh, City are leading with 6 points, followed by Brighton and Arsenal with goal difference. The matter. Uh, today we have Brentford facing Liverpool. We have uh, Chelsea playing uh, West. Chelsea playing Wolves and Bournemouth playing Newcastle. Um, all I can say is that um, uh, I'm I'm impressed by 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 my, my Manchester City. I'm impressed by Arsenal. Uh, they've been they, uh, they they've done well. Uh, Spurs, I think they are on the right track. But for Manchester United, next game is against Liverpool. If they lose that match at home. I think there's going to be interviews going on at Old Trafford as far as the new manager is concerned. Because I don't think the new management will be willing to risk it uh, this season. Ten Hag needs to deliver in the next five matches or he will face the sack. Let me know your views, guys, in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.